الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد We can never get enough reminders about ikhlas lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the importance of having sincerity in our deeds This is why the Prophet وسلم, said in Ma'mal ibn Niyat, Verily, actions are tied to the intentions. And verily, everyone will get that for which he intended. So, all of our deeds in Islam should be done for Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to please him, to worship him, subhanah and all of our deeds in Islam should be in accordance with the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam very very simple principles to understand however the practice of sincerity to Allah can be difficult for many and this is why a lot of the salaf would say one of the hardest things that they had to overcome or deal with and fight was within themselves having sincerity to Allah and that ikhlas lillah that you're doing your deed strictly for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is no easy task it's easy not to fall into Worshipping rocks and trees, seeking blessings from them. We, we know that, especially here for those of us who came to Islam, who left other faiths in order to come to that which is pure based on the worship of Allah alone. But unfortunately, many of our brothers and sisters and many, much of the Muslim world, took for granted what Allah gave them and fell into seeking blessings from rocks and stones. So don't think that it's something strange. You'll find it still going on in many places. You'll find it in Ethiopia. You'll find it in Muslim lands like people seeking blessings from the graves in Egypt as we speak. Not only are they having a, re a revolt and re rebellion, but there's also some people who seek blessings from the graves and the dead saints. And the same with Yemen and Hadramaut and other than Hadramaut people who still seek blessings from their wali living and dead those people who died they seek reward and favor from them and from the living from their sheikhs but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't, forg doesn't forgive the person who dies upon that deed the deed of shirk of worshipping other than him subhanahu and associating partners with him seeking blessings from other than him subhanahu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem inna allaha la yagfiru an yushrik bihi wa yagfiru Verily Allah does not forgive that you commit shirk with him but he forgives other than that for whomsoever he pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and worship Allah worship Allah alone do not associate partners with him, Subhana. That's the wadifa of the believer. That's the belief of Ahl Iman, of the Muslims. That's what Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah calls to. It's to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. To have sincerity, ikhlas. And be away from shirk. Allah commands us and shows us that the sunnah, that's the sunnah of the NBA, of the prophets, alayhim after salatu wasalam. قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب الكريم 
ولقد بعثنا في كل أمة رسول إن نعبد الله واجتنبوا تعبود. That we sent to every uh, every nation a messenger. To call to to worship Allah alone, and avoid worshiping those others besides Him, worshiping Tagut, the various things that people worship. And that goes back to what we're saying about those people worshiping the dead saints, those people worshiping the pro- others worshiping the prophets, alayhim after salatu wasalam, those people who worship rocks and trees or take them as oliya as. And, and, and worship the awliya, the salihin, the saints and the righteous people. And this is even up, although it's hard for us to, to believe unless you've seen those things. And I've seen masajid with graves in them, where people go and pray in. But I've never seen them supplicating to them. And it's well known that this happens, and many people have witnessed it. It's hard for us to believe that and, and, and see that. But it just goes to show you that as the ulama say, a very important principle, al that the truth or the reality of something is not in its name, but it's in its, its reality. So for example, although you have people, they say, La ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. So they bear witness that there's no God worthy of worship. And they say Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa is a last prophet and messenger alayhi salatu wa salam. But what they do in reality, what they worship in reality, regardless of the fact that they say this, is that they worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That they commit shirk. They go against Tawheed. They negate Ikhlas because they supplicate to the dead. During the time of the Prophet Wasallam, the Mushrikun, the pagans of Quraysh, they used to hang their weapons on a tree called Vat al-Anwat. Uh, Vat al-Anwat. And they used to seek blessings. And the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, because they were new to the religion, they wanted something like that to seek to seek blessings because they didn't know they didn't know the hukum they didn't know the ruling. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Subhanallah, he said, glorify be to Allah." He was amazed at this, and he said, "Verily, you have said what Musa said to his people." And he said that you would follow the way of those who came before you. So we have to, as an ummah, beware of shirk and, and know what shirk is and know what tawheed is and know that we can't worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the only one worthy of worship. La ilaha la ilaha illa and subhanaka inni kuntu min al-dhalimeen. There is no God worthy of worship except Allah. And verily, I'm one of the wicked sinners. I was one of the dhalimeen. So may Allah forgive us of our sins. May Allah bless us with a class with the bat. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم